what you're looking at right now is a pulsar. This is the most precise clock in the universe, more precise than any other clock that we have on our planet. It's so precise, in fact, that we've actually been thinking of using these as kind of beacons in space if one day we decide to explore the universe and create a an, uh, faster than speed of light travel or are able to visit other stars. But before we do all this, we actually want to find something else. We want to find a pulsar orbiting a black hole. This is actually known as the holy grail of astronomy because if we're able to find one where a black hole and a pulsar coexist together and orbit around each other, we can use this to study both of them and specifically we can actually discover new awesome things about gravity, about special in general relativity that Einstein uh, proposed over a hundred years ago and we can also study very strong gravitational fields and gravitational waves that would be created by the black hole. The theories that we have today, specifically general relativity, make very clear predictions about the nature of black holes and to prove those theories we would actually love to find one of these things orbiting one because then we'll be able to prove them. And of course, this would actually show us if Einstein was completely and 100% correct about his predictions or if he may have made mistakes. And so today, let's actually try to build a system with a black hole and pulsars orbiting around it and talk a little bit more about why this is kind of cool. Welcome to What the Math. <laughs> And the kind of a black hole that they want to find is something like this. Uh, a black hole that's not too massive, about uh, 5 to maybe 10 masses of sun, and a pulsar orbiting around it. So if we can actually find something that looks like this, and you can kind of see them dancing around each other, we'll be able to use this data to study all kinds of uh, gravitational disturbances created by the black hole, and uh, all kinds of really interesting theories will be finally resolved if we can actually uh, discover this. These systems are actually expected to be very, very rare, uh, but uh, a lot of the astronomers are hopeful that one day we'll be able to discover something like this because we currently were able to find a pulsar orbiting around our central black hole, the, the large black hole known as Sagittarius A, which you can kind of see in the game right here. Here it is. It's about 4.3 million masses of, of uh, our sun, and it actually is very, very large. This is how big it is. This is how large, it would actually envelop all of these objects easily. If I were to place this right here, it would actually possibly just suck them all in in an instance. There we go. Let's see what happens. Uh, so there they, there they go flying toward it as they're still orbiting around each other. And basically, um, these two objects are gone. <laughs> So there is a, a pulsar orbiting around Sagittarius, uh, but uh, to study the gravitational waves and to actually study all of the things we want to study, we need to find one that's relatively close to, uh, to Sagittarius A. Unfortunately, we haven't found one yet. Uh, the one we found is really, really far. It takes uh, many, many, many years to orbit around it, so it's not as good for us. And, and so what we're going to do is we're going to try to create a system uh, where Sagittarius is right here, and we're going to have a bunch of um, pulsars orbiting around it. Now to do that, or the easiest way to do that, I actually discovered that if you use a star called WD, uh, something, WD11420, oh, where did you go? 1142645, also known as Carbon White Dwarf Star. You can basically place these um, anywhere you want, really. I'm going to just place one here, one here, one here, one here, and a bunch more. And we're going to have some orbiting in other ways, other fashions as well. And so here we go. We're going to place them everywhere. And you'll see what I'm doing with this in a second. So let's just say there is a black hole, and I'm sure somewhere in the universe uh, there is one that sort of is like this, where you have a bunch of, um, specifically here is going to be neutron stars, neutron stars orbiting around it. So, all right, I think that's enough. Now we're going to stop this for a second and go into properties for each of these little guys. Scroll down up to the point where it says make pulsar, and then we're going to click this button. Now, you notice that initially it makes it so that its um, streams are too small. So we're gonna actually go right here and increase this by 10 times. So it's gonna be at least uh, three and how many zeros is this? Nine zeros, I think. You can make it bigger if you want. You can actually make this even 100 times bigger, but then it's way, way too big. I don't think that's, I don't think that looks as good as if it was just 
nine zeros. All right, so here we go. And do this for each one of them, and then what you get is this. And if I start the simulation now, you see that all of them are orbiting this beautiful black hole in a very interesting fashion. So this is essentially the little dance of... Let's actually remove this. Little dance of the pulsars around the black hole. Uh, now, you can change the rotations and... Uh, sorry, not the rotation, but the actual spin of a... Uh, each each one of these pulsars by going in here and changing the uh, magnetic pole degrees uh, So here I can actually make this 45 degrees and it will actually have a sort of a different spin uh, Now these spin really fast. You actually have to slow down to see what's happening uh, Go into seconds per second and you'll see that some of them have a very interesting spin and if you want them to spin even more, what you can do is you can also go into motion and then tidally lock each one of them so they actually start uh, moving a little bit when, uh, when they're orbiting the black hole. And if you want to give them a little bit of a wobble, uh, under motion here and angular velocity, if you give this value a little bit of a setting, like for example 0.1, here we go, here's one that starts wobbling a little bit and you can then go into the uh, magnetic pull angle here and change it a little bit. If you don't like it wobbling too much, make it lower. If you want it to wobble even more, make it higher. So here, here's a 40 degree wobble that sort of looks like this. Now, I'm gonna try to play around with this just to make it look a little bit better. And let's see what we can get here by basically changing all of these and making them really, um, really different from each other. And so here we go, all of them are basically flipping around and spinning in very different fashion and you can accelerate this just to make this a little bit more crazy. But what's interesting here is that so because this is a black hole and because it's uh, obviously very, very, very massive and it creates a very large gravitational field around it. And so here we go, we have a bunch of pulsars going around the black hole in a very, very interesting fashion. All of them are uh, basically spinning and flipping in different, different ways. So it kind of looks very unusual and very cool. And it's very possible that somewhere out there, there is a galaxy that has something like this, a bunch of uh, pulsars orbiting around a very, very massive black hole in the middle. And so what we might see from a distance is something that looks like this. Uh, we see a light dancing around and changing its luminosity and changing all kinds of radiation that it sends out toward us. So sometimes it's going to be X-ray, sometimes it's going to be uh, gamma rays, sometimes it's going to be just pure light. And if we zoom out, it sort of looks like this. It's, uh, it's a very interesting uh, luminous object that will definitely change its brightness um, quite, quite a lot. And so what it made me think about is one of the previous videos from last week was about quasars and blazars. And what we know about them is that they are very luminous and they do change their brightness. So for all we know, maybe one of those blazers or quasars that we're looking at right now is this, because here we have um, what we know about, uh, for example, blazers is that they're, they always change their luminosity. It's never predictable. And in a sense, it's actually similar to what you see here. So they do send out a lot of various types of um, waves. So it's not just um, X-rays or gamma rays. It's actually everything rays. Um, and our previous explanation about it was that it, it was most likely because of the way that matter is accreted and uh, sent out into the outer universe um, using the black hole. And I think I kind of explained in the video, we don't, we're not really sure how exactly it works, we just know that it, it sends out uh, two sort of... Uh, rays from the central black hole so one is goes up like this and one goes down like this and uh, one of those rays is pointing toward our planet now that's one explanation but you know what i kind of like this explanation as well what if it's actually a black hole that has a bunch of awesome pulsars around it but anyway, just finding at least one black hole with a pulsar next to it would be pretty awesome. So like I said, they're actually very, very rare. We still haven't found one where they're relatively close together. And once we find one, you'll actually probably know about it because it's going to be all over the news. It's something that uh, astro astrophysicists and astronomers have been looking for for a really long time. Anyway, let's actually do something different. Let's uh, increase the magnetic field value here by 10. And let's see what this looks like when we actually do that. All right, this is going to be really, really bright, but here we go. Look at that. This is awesome. So this is what 
a very very bright black hole with a bunch of pulsars might look like from a distance and look at that it's this is pretty far away and we can still see it uh, blinking and shimmering in the light uh, and so like I mentioned before because of the number of galaxies out there it's very likely that there's at least one that has a, a very massive black hole and many many pulsars orbiting around it whether it looks like this or not that's another question but it might exist uh, and whether one of the pulsars or quasars that we're observing uh, currently are actually this is another question. Now, what do you guys think? Do you think that possibly one of the quasars or possibly even all of them are actually this and not what we thought they were? What if it's actually a black hole covered in pulsars? What if it's actually, this is why we see so many different uh, really luminous, really bright objects in the sky and we just don't really know what they are? And of course, this would explain why we actually do see things like um, X-rays and gamma rays coming out of quasars, but it would not explain why we see things like radio galaxies, because uh, radio galaxies, quasars and blazers are obviously related. It's the same object, just from a different angle, like I explained in the previous video. But I think it makes for a pretty interesting hypothesis. So if one day we'll find something similar to this, it will explain quite a lot about the universe and will of course uh, finally help us understand gravity and gravitational field a lot better. Anyway, thank you for watching and hopefully you enjoyed this video about black holes and pulsars. Now you know how to make something similar to this and how to essentially make one of the brightest objects in the game. And look at how beautiful this is. It's pulsating and creating these really awesome effects. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Check out some of the other videos on Universe Sandbox 2 and Space Engine and also Kerbo Space Program that I've been posting in the past. And subscribe if you still haven't. Like this video and share it with your friends and game you later. See you in the next video. Bye bye.